Okay, gang, buckle up, because your boy, the grumpy old Killjoy, is on the case. I want to talk about wordplay, why people love it so much, and why you should use it sparingly, if at all. We're also going to talk about a man who elevated wordplay jokes into something better by sharing part of himself as he did it. That man used to be Mitch Hedberg. It still is, but it used to. I'm going to go pretty far afield on this one, but I absolutely do bring it back to the main point, so stick with me. Or don't. Writers love wordplay for the same reason that gym people love muscle tees. It shows off something they feel good about. And look, if you feel good about anything, by God, as long as it's not too harmful to you or anyone else, you should enjoy that thing. Life is short. But when it comes time to think about making work at a higher level, let's stress it up a little bit. The most that you can hope for from sheer wordplay is an applause break. But we're not in the business of applause. This is the laugh game. Wordplay type jokes also work well in written form, like on social media, but social media is not real life. Spotting parallels between the sounds and meanings of words is a mechanical skill. Anyone conversant in the language can do it. I think you should set your sights well beyond mechanical skill. To me, this art form is the pinnacle of communication. It has all the pressures of poetry, except that poetry doesn't need to be funny. You can drop a joke into any conversation and make friends. If you start quoting Byron, you run the risk of sounding like an erudite prick. Similar effect, by the way, if you use words like erudite. If you get the joke writing right, people will remember your joke long after they've forgotten your name. It's not exactly immortality, but it's good enough for me. The best writing is a balance between giving something of yourself without trying to control the audience. Wordplay jokes are joke-shaped, but they usually don't have that giving element. If they do, people will laugh. But in that case, the wordplay is a spice, not the main ingredient. Let me show you what I mean. Let's look at a classic wordplay joke where the human experience has been removed by time. It doesn't even look like a joke at all anymore. Here it is. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. If that doesn't sound like a joke to you, it's probably because you haven't heard people use the other side to mean the afterlife. Because that meaning has fallen out of favor in the 150 years or so since the joke was written, this sentence no longer seems like a joke at all. It just seems like a lame tweet the chicken wrote about itself. If you do understand that second definition of the other side, then the above is inarguably a joke. There's the other side of the literal street and the other side of being alive. It's still just a wordplay thing, other side, other side, but because it's about death, something that we all inevitably must experience, even though we fear it, it takes on a certain nihilistic quality that elevates it as a piece of art. Billy doesn't care about anything. He's a nihilist. Oh, that must be exhausting. Here's another example from Reader's Digest. Why did the chicken cross the playground? To get to the other slide. This is a rewrite of the original chicken joke without understanding the other side element of the original. It's functionally useless, unless you've heard the first one, because all it does is rhyme. Another from Reader's Digest. What do you call a chicken crossing the road? Poultry in motion. This is a more typical example of wordplay. Poultry, in this case, sounds like poetry. We learn nothing about the speaker. There's nothing to relate to here at all. It's just an expression of two words that sound alike. Compare that with this Mitch Hedberg joke. I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to too. <laughs> do you see how Mitch gave us something of himself there? There's an implied story about Mitch that we understand without him saying it. A lot of us can relate to the feeling of doing something we know we shouldn't do, but being unable to bring ourselves to quit. It's an extremely human feeling to be our own worst enemies in that way. And the joke is particularly poignant all these years later because we lost Mitch, young, to those very drugs he was joking about. He was just 37 years old when he died. That's what this art is all about. This Hedberg joke is 13 words that feel like they are carved in stone because they encapsulate humanity, helplessness, and loss. It's so much more than just the mechanical skill of understanding that something that used to be true could also still be true. This is where we want to be, people. If you want to toy around with words, fine, enjoy it. But also set your sights higher. And stay away from heroin so I can enjoy your work for a long time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe and maybe jump on the Patreon 
if you want to help me make more. And if you want to talk about comedy writing with people who are trying to do it in a constructive way, we also have a Discord channel.